Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another book haul. Yes, I'm now doing book hauls regularly. Um, if you're following my channel, um, you might know that in the past I didn't do many book hauls and that also had to do with the fact that um, and up until last year, I bought at least half of my books as ebooks, and I didn't buy that many physical books to show you. But if you remember, I bought this card last year because I succumbed to FOMO. Everybody had a card and I didn't, so I needed a card. And you have to fill that card with books that you want to read, and you can't fill them with ebooks. So <laughs> the card also made me buy more physical books and hence I can film more book hauls and I bought quite a few in February. I have to say that in order to keep at least the finances a little bit in check I buy if possible I buy uh, the books used certainly if it's a backlisted book and the first book I want to show you is such a backlisted book that I bought used and that is Louisa Edrick's novel The Beat Queen first published in 1986. Um, um, if you're following my channel, you probably know that one of the projects, reading projects for 2020 is called Author Spotlight. Um, and the author in the spotlight is Louisa Edrick, because I really love her work, but I haven't read nearly, I, I think I've read only um, not even half of her novels. So uh, together with Terry from uh, Miss Terry B, uh, leave a link to her channel down below. Please check her out if you're not subscribed. Um, she wanted to also read uh, Louisa Edrick's back, uh, backlist, um, the novels. So we're reading them in chronological order. Last month, uh, we read her debut novel, Love Medicine, which we both really, really liked. And this month, her second one, The Beat Queen. Uh, this is a historical novel uh, starting in um, 1980s, uh, 1930s, sorry, uh, about, um, and we follow uh, a couple um, that moves to uh, North Dakota, and then it's a 40-year family saga. And I'm sure one of the women will be the Beat Queen. Uh, I don't know more than that. I haven't read this one. Love Medicine was a reread for me, but I haven't read this one. So it will be a new book for me, uh, for Louisa Edrick. And I'm really looking forward uh, to this one. And uh, Terry and I will start buddy reading this uh, mid-February. So I will report back as soon as we read it. The next two books I bought for Black History Month because I want to read at least two or three um, black authors uh, during the month of February. And the first one is quite a battered copy that I bought. Um, a sweetheart, it's glaring, Alicia McKenzie. She's a, uh, Alicia McKenzie is a Jamaican author that I really wanted to read for quite some time and haven't gotten around to it. Um, and there's also a prompt, um, the Reading Women Challenge that I'm doing. And one of the prompts is read a Caribbean uh, or Indian author. So this fits various things that I want to do during the year. Um, this is a debut novel. Um, Alicia uh, Ken McKenzie has written uh, short stories before that. I've already read it and I really liked it. It's the story of Dulce, a Jamaican artist who moves to New York and makes quite a splash there. Um, the book opens when Dulce has died. So that's not a spoiler. That's the premise of the book. And then we are told about Dulce's life from various points of views, people who are in one way or another related to her. So we get from her best friend, from her husband, from her father, uh, from other family members. We get short uh, chapters relating a story how they see Dulce. And in the end, um, this gives us a picture of this rather fascinating woman, Dulce, who died really young in her early 30s. I will talk about more, I will talk more about this book uh, in a recent reads, um, but I read it and I really liked it and I don't care that the 
the this copy is rather battered. I was looking for this book for so long so that I was just happy to have found it. The second book I bought for Black History Month uh, was also a used copy but in much better condition than Sweetheart and that is Sora Neale Hurston's I think most famous uh, uh, novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God, first published in 1937. And I haven't read it. Yes, yes, shame on me, curse at the screen, I know. I feel bad enough, so you don't have to add insult to injury. Um, I read a couple of um, uh, other books by, by Sora Neil Hurston, and this one is about Janie Crawford, I think is her last name. Uh, let me see. Yes, Janie Crawford. Um, her life uh, through various marriages, um, her struggle to find her way. Um, and I'm looking forward to this book, of course, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. I have to say that um, I sometimes struggle uh, with Sora Neale Hurston's work, who was, by the way, one of the most famous authors of the Harlem Renaissance, but you know all that because you all have read this book. Anyway, but I struggle sometimes with her books uh, because of the dialogue. She writes dialogue in um, the way uh, people speak. So it's, for me, sometimes as a non-native English speaker, it's difficult to read. I need some time to get into it. Uh, in order to understand what people are talking about. Uh, so I hope I will get along with this one, but I'm uh, really excited to have finally bought this one and I will read it in February and of course I will report back. The next two books that I bought are also sort of part of the theme because one of the things that I really want to uh, put more effort in uh, is reading translated works of fiction. Um, I, I try to read at least two each month um, and read books also, you know, not translated from the Italian only, but try to sort of expand my horizon a little. And the first one I bought to do just that um, is a modern classic, first published in 1973, uh, Child of Fortune by Yuko Tsushima, uh, translated from the Japanese by Ger Geraldine Harcourt. Um, I have never read this author, and again, shame on me, because she is, uh, as I learned, one of the most uh, prominent uh, contemporary uh, Japanese authors. Uh, so I'm really... Uh, I feel bad throughout this whole video. I feel bad because of all the books <laughs> that are famous that I haven't read. But this sounded intriguing as well. It's quite a short uh, book about um, a woman who is uh, pictured as a complete failure. Failure as a mother, failure as a wife. She's very self-absorbed. Um, and I always like these kind of um, a bit off characters. I'd, I'm not that thrilled by the by the print. I have to say, it it's not my my favorite sort of very small smallish print. And then they leave these huge margins, so they could have enhanced the print a bit. But there you go. So anyway, I will read my first uh, Yuko Tsushima. Sean, you should be proud of me because if I remember correctly, you really love this book. And the other translated book that I bought uh, for February is a book that I've been meaning to read ever since it has been published in English two years ago in 2018, and that is Nega Javadi, Disoriental, translated from the French by Tina Korver, first published in France in 2016. Um, uh, the author is uh, has been was born in 1969 in uh, Iran, but uh, uh, immigrated to France and writes in French. Um, and it's about uh, a woman, um, Kimia, I think you pronounce her name. I'm not sure. Kimia, help me if you are uh, a Persian speaker. Um, who, uh, like the author, uh, fled Iran with her mother and siblings in order to join her father, who already lives in France, and then it tells us the story of this woman. Um, the book has won multiple prizes, as you can see on the cover. <sighs> deep sigh. Uh, and a lot of people that I uh, know and whose um, uh, opinion I really appreciate and value have loved this book, but I've missed it and I want to correct this mistake in February. The next book I bought also 
fulfills multiple prompts. You know, we are all for the for the multiples here, and that is Dune Song uh, by Anissa M. Busiani. Busiana, uh, first published in 2018. Um, um, Busiana is um, an American author. That is to say, she was born in the U.S. Um, she has a Moroccan father and a French mother. She was brought up in Morocco and then returned to the U.S. to do her studies. And she now lives in Paris, but she writes in English. So this is not a translated a work of fiction. And it's a set just after uh, 9-11, and the uh, protagonist, uh, also a Moroccan immigrant, um, goes back to Morocco after uh, the the 9/11 attacks, and then we follow her story there. I don't know uh, much about this book. Uh, this was the February pick for the Read Around the World book club um, that I have mentioned like gazillion times, uh, but it also uh, fills a prompt for the Reading Women Challenge uh, because you one of the prompts is read a book by an Arab author. So all for the multiples um, and I, I it's not that thin so I hope that I will get to it in February in time to leave a comment for the World Around the Book Club February read uh, but I, I'm not sure yet but I will certainly read it uh, within the next two months. Having uh, having listened to all my, the books, you might ask, where's the nonfiction? Where's the nonfiction? You promised us that you will feature more nonfiction. Yes, I will. Here we go. <laughs> Pale Rider by Laura Spinney, first published um, in 2017. And you might not be surprised by the topic because I'm still in the middle of the pandemic obsession. Uh, so this is one more book that I want to read about the flu pandemic in 1918-1919. Um, it's a fairly recent book published just short of 100 years after the pandemic. Um, and it gives an overview over the global um, uh, impact that this flu had and also, uh, ha as the subtitle said, how it changed the world. Um, I mean, it's always when you read on a certain topic, like I'm now obsessed with the flu pandemic of 1918, um, and I read now, I think, five or six books. And of course... Um, the books overlap in in uh, what they tell. I mean, it's not that every book has a new angle. Uh, so it's, uh, but I find that not boring uh, because every author um, always chooses to, you know, to focus on a certain point or a certain theme. And it, it really gives me a broader picture of this whole um, um, a pandemic. So I'm really looking forward to this, especially uh, also because it, it says something how it changed the world. So I, I guess we get an outlook of what happened uh, after and because of the flu. Um, and it won't be the last. So there will be more um, flu pandemic books featured on this channel. I can promise you. And the last book I want to show you is a German book, but it is available uh, in an English translation, and that is Ida Pfeiffer. This is obviously the German language edition, um, Reise einer Wienerin in das Heilige Land. So the travel of a Viennese woman um, to the Holy Land. Um, and this is a republishing in, an, in a horrendous print. But what can you do? Um, Ida Pfeiffer uh, was born in 1797 and she traveled the world and wrote about it. And I had never heard of it, of her or her books. Uh, but Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventure came across um, this woman and her books and we decided uh, to read it together in February. Um, you might know Mel and I, we are both organizing this year-long um, uh, read-along, read-a-thon, uh, read German books 2020, in which we uh, ask people or hope that people will read more books written originally in German, in whatever translation you want. I will leave a link to the Goodreads group down below. If you haven't heard of this um, read-a-thon, you can check it out. And th the only thing you have to do is read 
at least one book that was originally written in German. So this one uh, was first published in 1850 um, with a different title. Um, uh, so this is a republishing, as I said, and it's a, really a travel journal about this woman who was, even though I had never heard of her, quite exceptional for the time, uh, the early and mid 19th century as a woman. She was the first woman uh, who uh, traveled through Borneo. Um, she traveled to Egypt, uh, here to the Holy Land, to Brazil. So she was a world traveler um, and she wrote about it. I thought that was fascinating when Mel told me about it. Uh, and I'm really looking forward, despite the horrendous uh, print edition, I'm really looking forward uh, to reading this together with Mel. So these were the books that I bought in February. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Looking forward to talking to you as always in the comments. Maybe you want to recommend books that you bought uh, in February that you are excited about. Uh, let me know whether any of the books that I just hauled interest you. And I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.